Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be doing some French Country thrift flips for spring using new IOD and JRV stencils. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. I found this little set of drawers at the thrift store for about $3 and knew that it would look great with some paint. So my first step after cleaning is to give the front of the drawers two coats of Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. It has a built-in stain blocker so I know that it will cover any of the paint underneath and it will also be protected as it has a built-in top coat. Next, I'm going to be staining the outside of the drawers. I'm using Dixie Bell's Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain and I'm misting the surface of the wood first. The water is going to help the stain to go on more evenly. So as you can see, I'm repeating the steps for each side and I'm also wiping off the excess. When this stain is dry, I will seal the outside with Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's new Antiquities stamp. This stamp is filled with so many lovely vintage style labels and I knew that I wanted to add some to the front of these drawers. So I've picked the ones that I think will be suitable. And then I like to actually cut my stamps off and I keep them on the backing unless I need to use the stamps on a curved surface. Now that I've worked out what stamps I'm going to use, I'm going to be using IOD's permanent black ink. So I'm lightly pressing the ink pad against my stamp, making sure that I've got enough, but not too much. And then I'm going to very carefully position my stamp. And once I've got it centered, I'm going to press down and then I'm committed. I'm having one hand hold the stamp in place while the other hand moves around the stamp, applying light pressure. I always try to clean my stamps off as soon as I've used them with a wet wipe, especially on a hot day. I'm going to repeat the same steps for each of the stamps on each of the four drawers. I noticed that while stamping this bicycle stamp that I had to angle my pad just a little bit to get the ink on the fine spoke details of the wheel. IOD ink is permanent, so I'm not going to seal these. These are on a vertical surface, so I'm sure they'll be fine. Finally, before I put the drawers back in, I decided to just paint all of the sides to give it a more tidy look. And here are our finished drawers. I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. I think that those stamps are absolutely gorgeous. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our next project is this cotton tote bag. After washing and ironing, I am placing a piece of cardboard in the tote bag itself. This is going to make sure that none of the ink or paint that we're about to use goes through. 
I'm going to be using IOD's new La Campaign stamp. I know I'm not saying it right. It's the best I can do as an Australian. And I'm going to be using this lovely Rooster. I adore this design. I've already used it once and we're going to use it today with IOD's Black Permanent Ink. So I am inking up the Rooster. I want to have enough that it's going to be able to soak into the fabric, but not so much that we have any bleeding or smearing. Once I've got enough ink, I'm going to center the design and then very carefully press the rooster down. And once it's down, I'm always going to have one hand on the stamp itself to make sure that it doesn't move. And I'm going to use the other hand to move around the design and make sure that I've got good contact. You can see that I am lifting the stamp up every now and then just to make sure that the design is transferring well. When I'm happy that the image has transferred, I am pulling the stamp away. Next, I'm going to be using the JRV Grain Sack Stripe Stencil. Before I can start stenciling, I grabbed the mask that comes in all of your IOD stamps and I've placed it over the top of the rooster. And now you can see here, I'm positioning the Grain Sack Stripe down the center and I'm going to use some masking tape to tape that and the mask in place. I'm then going to mix a little bit of cactus silk mineral paint with some water. I want to water this down so that it's able to better soak into the fabric and not just sit on top. So I'm using my mister and I'm going to just very carefully mix up the watery paint. And then when I'm happy with that, I am going to be using a JRV stencil brush for this. So I'm dabbing my stencil brush into the watered down paint, dabbing off the excess, and then now I am working the paint into the fabric. Now I found that because of the shape of the stencil, I had better success just sort of pressing my brush down and running it along the lines and making sure that I sort of held some of it in place so it didn't move. And I'm just repeating that same process until I have the entire grain sack stripe done. So something that I did not notice until I pulled the stencil away is that the mask did not cut in between the little rooster's legs. So when I pull the stencil away shortly, you'll see that there is a bit of a gap left between the legs that I am going to have to fix. To fix this, I'm going to remove the mask and I'm going to carefully lay my stencil back down, making sure that I have that lined up properly with the lines that are already there. And then I'm going to lightly go over the top of the lines and I'm just going to have to be very careful not to actually go up onto the body of the rooster. Unfortunately, I did have to get a little bit on his legs, but I don't think it's that noticeable. When my paint and ink is dry, I will heat set this with an iron on cotton setting and I will run that over the top of the bag for a few minutes. And here's our finished tote bag. I just love this rooster and the JRV grain sack stripe stencil made this whole thing come together. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For our final project, we're going to be using this frame that I thrifted for a dollar. My first step is to remove the backing and the glass, and I'm going to then be using some artist paper, and I'm going to pull that out of the book. And I've got the insert from the frame, so I know how big of an area that I have to work with. So I'm going to use this. I'm tracing around the outside, and then I'm going to trim the paper to size. Next, I'm going to be using the new Melange Paint Inlay. This has eight pages of so many beautiful French country designs. This is perfect if you have not tried inlays before because there is lots of little projects that you can do and you can spread this over so many projects, guys. I absolutely adore this. I've already done a project using one of the designs from the inlay, so make sure you check out the 2023 spring release playlist if you'd like to see that. 
for this project, I'm going to be using this lovely Rooster artwork. As soon as I saw this, I started hunting for suitable frames. So as you can see, we're not going to get the whole image, but we're going to get most of it. So I'm going to apply a coat of Dixie Bell's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint to my artist paper. I want this as a base so that my paint doesn't sink in as quickly as it might if I was doing this straight on the paper because you need your paint to be wet for a paint inlay to work. When the first coat of paint is dry, I'm coming in with another coat of paint. I'm going a little bit thicker here because I need enough so that my paint inlay will be able to have the image transferred. So I'm working my way across the paper. This is an older paint, so you will see me picking out a few dried bits and pieces, but I don't like to waste anything. So I'm using this today. So I'm gonna apply it to the whole thing. And again, I need that paint to be wet. So I am working as quickly as I can. It's a hot day and I wanna get this whole thing covered and my paint inlay down before this coat dries. Now that I have enough paint, I'm going to place my paint inlay design side down. The grid should be facing up at you. I'm pressing it into my wet paint, smoothing it with my fingers, and then I'm going to grab a brayer and I'm going to use that to apply some pressure to make sure that I've got good contact. So I'm going to work my way across the paper and make sure that I haven't missed any areas. I'm then going to grab my water mister bottle and I'm going to mist the entire surface thoroughly. This is going to help activate the paint in the inlay. And then I am grabbing my brayer again and very carefully going over the top one last time. Once my paint inlay is dry, it's had about 30 minutes to dry. It's a hot day. I'm going to mist the whole thing and then I'm going to give it one minute for the water to sit. If you have any resistance, you need to come back in with the mister and then I'm going to very carefully and slowly pull my inlay away. Now you want to be careful here not to rip it because you will get another use, possibly even another two uses out of this. So you definitely want to be careful. If you do not have a water mister, that's fine. Just use a damp cloth. So I'm going to set this paint inlay off to the side to dry. And then I am going to come in with some of Dixie Bell's Tobacco Road. I've watered it down. And I am actually going to be flicking bits of the Tobacco Road onto my paper. I want to give this a bit more of an aged appearance. Now, ordinarily you would want to then seal your paint inlay, but this is going to be behind glass. So I'm not worried about that. So I will not be sealing mine today. If you need to seal it, you can use a spray clear coat to do that. While this is drying, I'm going to grab my Olive Crest mold and my Jovi Air Dry Clay and start work on the frame. I'm dusting my mold with cornstarch and then I'm working the clay into the scroll designs there. I'm going to be casting eight of those, uh, four of each of the different directions, and they're going to go in the corners. And then I'm also going to be doing a few other elements. I really want to give this frame more of an ornate feel. When you're using clay, you'll want to roll it into a shape similar to the casting that you want to make, and you're going to then press it into the molds. IOD molds have a micro rim, which makes it very easy for you to get a nice clean edge. So I use my thumb and I push away from the mold, and I find that the easiest way to work the clay in. And then I like to either use gravity to help me get it out, or I pull the mold and I pull the castings out. If you haven't used molds before, the Olive Crest mold is a really great one to start with because of all the elements that you get in it. And I especially keep my eye out for cheap frames in the thrift stores so that I can do just this sort of a project. Next, I'm going to use a strong wood glue to glue all of my castings down. There's no right or wrong way to arrange your molds when you're doing a project like this, but I just tried to envision what those old French frames or ornate mirrors looked like, and I tried to have some symmetry with the same molds on either side. When I have all of my castings glued down, I'll use a wet wipe to clean off the glue. 
Next, I'm going to do two coats of Dixie Belle's Cactus Silk Mineral Paint. This is a beautiful green tone, and I'm going to be doing some layering here. So green is not going to be the predominant color here. I just want it peeking through. So I'm going to paint very carefully over my molds because even though they've been setting for quite a while, I don't want to accidentally ruin any of the details. So I am being very gentle and I am using a synthetic brush. Once this has had a few hours to dry, I'm going to come in with Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. And at first I'm just brushing over the top of the molds and then I am working the paint around the rest of the frame. I still wanna see peaks of that green showing through, but it will take two coats of me to get the desired look. When this coat's dry, I am going to seal the entire thing with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. Next, I'm going to give this more of an antiqued look with some Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. I've watered it down a bit and then I am very carefully applying it and I'm using a wet wipe to wipe back a lot of the excess. I want this to sit around the castings and in some of the details. You could definitely achieve a similar look if you were to apply some brown wax or perhaps even a brown paint wash. But also remember if this look isn't for you, you could just leave this step out. To age this up even further, I'm going to be using the Vintage Textures stamp, specifically the Crackle stamp. I'm going to be using the black permanent ink and you can see I'm just randomly pressing the stamp on the frame. I wanna give this an aged appearance so I'm not going for a uniform look. I'm pressing it all over the frame, including some of the molds. I just love these stamps. I think that they look so authentic and if you're someone who likes more of a vintage rustic look, this is definitely a stamp for you. Finally, I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax. I've got a little bit on my finger and I'm just running my finger along some of the casting details. Now that my artwork is dry and my frame is ready, I'm going to put them back together. I'm going to carefully place the glass back in the frame and then I am going to put the beautiful artwork that we just created using the inlay down and putting the backing on as well. And here's our finished artwork. I really hope that you enjoyed today's projects and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up, comment and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you're not already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find all of the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.